the first thing we have to consider when talking about medical astrology, the definition of illness, what is illness? Because uh, medical astrology is part of the tradition of the humoral medicine. Humoral medicine is the medicine of the elements. It states that the universe, all living beings, uh, are composed of four building blocks, which are the four elements. And illness arises due to an imbalance in those elements. The idea is that every human being or creature, dogs, cats, and plants, even the whole biosphere, the entire planet, can be diagnosed according to the proportion of the elements. So we have four elements and two axes. It's two pairs of opposites. Fire is the opposite of water. And then the other axis is air and earth. They are opposites. So through horary, we can diagnose if one of these elements is out of balance. Actually, it's the axis that's out of balance. If you have too much air, you're going to have too little earth. If you have too much fire, you're going to have too little water, and so on and so forth. We're going to explore the technique in horary that allows us to do that type of diagnosis. The type of medicine that's humoral medicine is part of different uh, traditions and different lineages of medicine. Pretty much all of the Eastern medicine traditions are humoral medicine. They deal with the humors in one way or another. Ayurveda works with three, it's not three elements, but it's a paradigm that divides these elements into three rather than four. Chinese medicine and Tibetan medicine works with five. They introduce the fifth element, which is ether or space. So they have their different ways of uh, addressing those things. In medical astrology, the Western astrology, and I believe the Vedic as well, we work with four elements. And there is one tradition in particular that works with four elements. It's the Yunani Tib tradition, which is the Greek medicine, the medicine from Hippocrates and Galen. They work with four elements. So medical astrology matches that paradigm really well. So if somebody wants to pursue this further, uh, getting engaged with Yunani Tib or Greek medicine is a good idea because they have a whole system of healing that's based on this. So you can find foods that are according to the four elements, herbs and everything. So it's really cool. So the humoral diagnosis is done by Hori, and that's what we're going to be doing. The birth chart is to determine the birth temperament. And you cannot use the birth temperament to diagnose the present health condition of a person. You cannot do that. You may be born with an imbalance in the elements, but later on in life, you may have a different type of imbalance depending on the conditions you are in, the environment and everything. So it's important to do a hurry to diagnose the present condition. Never use the birth chart. The birth chart is useful, but it's for something else. There's decumbiture as well, but we don't use decumbiture. If you want information about that, there is on the website as well. Hori has different capabilities. It can give you the diagnosis. It will also tell you the part of the body, the system that's afflicted. So if you have a problem in your heart or in your kidneys or in your brain, the Hori will also describe that. And that leads to another extremely important concept in humoral medicine, which is the concept of cause and symptoms. They are two different things, and they are diagnosed separately and treated separately. And that's super important because a lot of the healing practitioners nowadays do not have a diagnostic method to separate cause from symptoms. They do whatever diagnostic they can with the methods that they have at their disposal, their intuition as well, and then they treat whatever appears to be happening to the person. But it often happens that they are treating the symptom, not the cause. In many cases, the symptoms and the cause are the same. So you have an excess of fire and you have um, rashes on your skin, for example which is a fire symptom. 
So the cause is fire and the symptom is fire. Great. So if you treat that, you treat both the cause and the symptom. But there are some cases where the symptom and the cause are different. As you may have seen on the website in one of the articles, if you have a strong cold and then you have a high fever, the fever is a higher symptom. But the reason you have the fever is an excess of coldness and moisture, which is water, which caused the fever in the first place. So you have to be able to treat the fever with one method, which is to decrease the fire. And you have to treat the cause, which is to increase the temperature and the dryness in the person. Ori gives you the ability of determining that. And of course, if you see an Ayurvedic or Chinese doctor, they will be able to do that as well with their methods, usually using pulse diagnosis, looking at the irises and uh, looking at the urine and a number of other uh, methods that they have. At the bottom left, we have a list of glands that we can use to determine what part of the body is afflicted. So each planet is the natural ruler of a particular gland. We have more uh, significators here for planets and just different organs or systems that are ruled by a particular planet. And then the houses also are significators of uh, parts of the body or the anatomy and sometimes systems. And this is the primary source of significators in Hori. The priority is always house rulership. At the bottom right, we have a list of stars that affect the eyesight. So when we do horrors about problems with the eyes, at least one of these stars will appear, conjunct your significator or conjunct the sun, which is the eyes, or the moon, which is also the eye, or conjunct some other relevant planet. So these stars are very important when we do horror about the eyes. And finally, planeting sign is another anatomical system that can be used. Here we dealt with just anatomy and the symptoms. As far as the cause is concerned, we're going to see that the diagnosis consists of three dimensions. One is the type of imbalance that you have. If you have too much fire, or too much water, etc., that's determined by the, uh, the sign where a certain planet is. And there is a particular planet that's important to determine that. And it's uh, the sign where it's located will tell you if it's fire, water, air or earth. The mode of the sign will determine the mode of the illness or the imbalance, which can be fixed, mutable or cardinal. And we're going to see examples of that as well. Each one of them has a particular meaning in how the illness or the health condition is going to manifest through time. And the third important thing is the degree. In humoral medicine, there are four degrees of imbalance. So if you have a first degree imbalance, it's very light. So it requires relatively light measures in order to restore balance. And it gets worse progressively until you have fourth degree imbalances. If you have a fourth degree imbalance, it can be very difficult to restore balance depending on the mode, but uh, it usually requires a more severe intervention to restore balance. So a first degree balance may require some really light herbs to heal. For a fourth degree imbalance will require a much stronger type of herb in order to do it. And every food and every herb that's used as medicine and humoral medicine also has a degree of strength. So peppermint, for example, is a third degree herb. So if you have a third degree imbalance and you want to use that herb, that's the adequate herb to use. If you cannot sleep, but your imbalance is first degree, you can take a chamomile, which is a first degree herb. So it's a light, calming tea. If you want something stronger, you can use valerian and so on and so forth. Finally, this is the horary table. We use this table for any type of horary, basically. But today we're going to be using especially to determine the mode of imbalances. So as you can see in the signs, each sign has an element, of course, 
And then he has a mode. If the cause of the illness or the cause of the imbalance is in Aries, we're going to see that it's a cardinal sign. So the imbalance will behave in a certain way. If it's in Leo, it's a fixed sign. So it will behave differently. If it's in Virgo, it's mutable. So those things, we get it from this table. And there are other qualities for each particular sign here that are useful in different types of charts. If we're doing charts about pregnancy, for example, this is very important because certain signs are fertile, certain are neutral, certain are barren. So if you want to know about pregnancy, this is really important. And here we have other things that we have to use if we need to do timing. And finally, essential dignities is important in order to determine the quality of certain organs or system. So if your liver is signified by Saturn in Aries, it means that your liver is kind of beaten up. It's not in good shape. And if your eye is signified by the moon in Cancer, it's in good shape. And also the receptions. We are going to use this table in order to determine how one planet relates to another planet. So for example, one planet signifies the treatment and another planet signifies your body. If the planet is in a good reception towards your body, it means that the treatment will help you and vice versa. If it's in the detriment of your body, it means it's not going to help you and it can even harm you. So we're going to use this table in order to determine that kind of thing. One final comment about this document here. The document is divided by the different planets. So if the moon is in one of these signs, we consult this table to tell us the degree of heat and the degree of moisture of each planet. So we have the moon and Jupiter, Saturn, Mars, the sun, they're all here. And this table comes from information contained in a book from the 17th century written by Richard Saunders. He was a medical astrologer then. And uh, it's fantastic because it's the only document to our knowledge that contains that information from history. So there is a list in that book of all planets in all signs and the degree of each imbalance for each sign. There is a logic behind it, which is nice to, we're not going to look at it today, but it's really cool the way it's done. So depending on the degree a planet is in each sign, it will have a certain degree of moisture and heat. And another peculiar thing about this list is if a planet is early in the zodiac, for example, a planet in Aries, the degree is usually low. It's like first degree imbalance. And then it progressively rises as it goes further into the zodiac. So a planet in Pisces is a very extreme imbalance. Uh, it's probably a fourth degree. So the later the planet is in the zodiac, the more severe is the imbalance or the amount of heat and moisture or lack thereof. And we're going to look at examples of that.